Bow before your techno king. Somebody get me this electric unicycle. And Tinder wants you to do background checks. Let's get into the hot news, my friend. I am your host, Brett. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I could find on the internet. Let's start off with the top story of the day, which is Elon Musk rebuking the daily norms of society, slapping them in the face, saying, you're gonna acknowledge me as the techno king of Tesla, or so help me, I'm gonna call you Susie for the rest of your life. And I know I may offend some people who are named Susie, but given our audience, in statistics. I'm sorry to the 0.2% female audience. Anyways, this is yes, real Elon Musk in a filing to the SEC is now dubbed the techno king of Tesla, not the CEO, even though he's maintaining his position as the CEO and the CFO shall henceforth be known master of coin. And I'm sure somehow they're going to tie this into the new updates on the new Teslas that have the Witcher 3 gaming on it and toss a coin to your Witcher, oh master of coin from Tesla that it has to happen. Okay. But techno King and master of coin, the CEO and CFO of Tesla is going to be great, especially when they have the quarterly earnings report. It's just going to be like, uh, yes. Uh, can the techno King of Tesla please now speak us to the matter? And then Elon Musk will be like, yeah, we're making dope electric vehicles that go from like the cyber truck. But what's the opposite of a cyber truck we now know is this canoe bubbly pickup truck. It's going to launch in 2023. It's a bubbly boy. It, it's great as a camper, as a pickup truck. This looks like a weird little thing. Like they have good pictures of it camping, right? And that uh, flop out tailgate right there. But oh boy, this is uh, this is this is the crazy candy van that everybody was telling you about. And Honda's getting crazy by launching oh, two electric SUVs in 2024, you know, in three years from now, when all the other companies are making electric vehicles kind of today, we're really, really working on it. The, Honda 2024. Apparently they're going to do one Honda, one Acura, and they're going to be partnering up with GM to produce them. All of this sounds like Honda might be behind, not the eight ball here. They might be behind the cue ball. That's not a good analogy. I, I'm not into billiards. Honda's behind the bell curve. That's what I'm trying to say. Let's get off of Honda not paying attention to the winds of change. And let's talk about Tesla having some winds potentially have started a greater fire that didn't actually happen. This is a segue of a fire that happened at Tesla's Fremont factory with one of their hydraulic presses catching on fire. Their stamping machine. Nobody was injured. Everybody's fine. It might slow down some production, but it mostly is OK. They got it under control rather quickly. It was only on fire for about an hour, but this may or may not be tied to some delays that are coming out with the Model S Plaid Plus that's supposed to be coming out. It now says as of the delivery, if you try to purchase the one right now, mid 2022, even though originally it was supposed to launch towards the end of this year. Now, it's not yet known if people who put in the reservations for Plaid Plus will still get it by the end of this year. And if you just preserve one now, you're going to get it next year. It's hard to say because Tesla is not very clear on how they do this sort of thing. But in case you want the under two second zero to 60 500 plus mile range beast, you gotta wait and waiting at chargers all across India might be done in collaboration with Tata, according to some reports that Tesla is in official talks with Tata to bring charging infrastructure for their electric vehicles into India and scale it up that way. And Elon Musk has scaled up space travel with the Falcon 9 booster, setting a record for its ninth total time of launching and returning to Earth with its third batch of Starlink satellites, which you can see being deployed in this little video right here. Check that out. Look at all those beautiful satellites latching from their mother's teat also known as a satellite why did i go there who knows Catelyn? you keep that in and i'm sorry that you had to hear me say that but yes it is undocking from the zipple <laughs> Speaking of awkward things, let's talk about this electric unicycle, which is on Alibaba for like less than two thousand dollars. It's actually sold out as of right now, but apparently it's self correcting for staying upright. My dad sent me this link when he saw it and I was like, how dare you send me this? I'm totally going to buy it. And I'm going to be out of money. And he was like, I'm so sorry. And then I was like, oh, just kidding. I can't. I'm not going to. And so I didn't, but it sold out, so it doesn't matter. But I would totally ride that electric unicycle, wouldn't you? Here come that boy. Bruh. Here comes that boy. And would you ride in essentially what's the equivalent of an electric unicycle if you convert it to car? Mini saying that they're going to make their last gas model in 2025 and try to have half of its sales be electric by 2027 and go all electric by 2030. It just feels too late. We're nine years. That's nine years from now. You think like that just 
It feels like you're not paying attention to how things are going. Company that is paying attention is Kia slash Hyundai with them unveiling the EV6, which they said that they would, and then they did. You get a look at the first car from Kia that's built on the Hyundai Ioniq 5 platform, but with different styling changes, you can see you got that sharp tailgate at the back for its hatchback setup and this minimalist interior, which I actually personally really like. I'm excited to see how the EV6 is pricing, release date, all of that kind of stuff, but Hyundai and Kia kind of, they, they got me a little excited. I'm, I'm kind of curious. And yesterday was VW's power day. Speaking of electric vehicles, basically for this entire episode, VW announcing that they're gonna try to lower battery costs by 50% and establish an increase in production of 240 gigawatts by the end of the decade, which is essentially what Tesla said. So this battery day, power day thing that they're doing, they're just basically, I don't know if they got Tesla's notes or whatever, but they also announced that they're gonna be ordering $14 billion worth of battery cells from Northvolt's Gigafactory, which is another phrase borrowed from Tesla. Gigafactory, as far as I can tell, wasn't really used uh, very, very expansively until Tesla. And now Northvolt's using it for their Gigafactory, $14 billion, that's big, that's a big chunk of change. And now let's get off of the electric vehicles and Netflix wants you to get off of your ex because they are now going to be prompting people to get their own dang password for their Netflix. They see you're logging in from a different IP address. They're gonna make sure that you two-factor authentication by email or text saying, hey, if you don't live with the owner of this account, you need your own account to keep watching, okay? Get over him, Debra. Time's up. You kick him off. You don't have to go through the awkward conversation. We got you, girl. As I imagine what Netflix is saying behind the scenes and what OnePlus is saying in front of the scenes is that their smartwatch is going to be debuted on March 23rd. We'll be able to see it there at just showing that they, hey, we're working on it. And Russian scientists are working on detecting neutrinos by dumping a telescope into a Siberian lake. I know, I know, sounds crazy, but they got to get it into the water because it's a good medium for detecting neutrinos. And it's going to be between 2,500 and 4,300 feet down in Lake Baikal, which is a Siberian lake. And it's going to be really, really cold, but they're just they're trying to detect the neutrinos to help learn about the early parts of the universe. This excites me. Let's I'll update it if it ever gets updates. Speaking of updates, segue to Tinder, uh, running background checks on people that you potentially match with. Apparently Tinder and its parent company are partnering up with a company that does run basic background checks based on first name and phone number. And it just kind of gives you a history of whether or not there's violence or an arrest record for things that could potentially lead to a bad scenario in a relationship. However, they did say that they're not going to be publicizing drug possession charges because those don't always have an active correlation, at least according to them, to gender-based violence, so it's not a meaningful statistic, so they're only going to be really including things that you should be concerned about with dating person with their arrest record. What do you think of getting a background check on your date before it happens? Let me know down below in the comments. And while you're down on over there, move your mouse up to over here and check out the first episode of Hot News today. You can also check this playlist right here for all of the episodes you may have missed in case you want to catch up on the hottest news on the internet. My friends, don't forget, don't go looking at cold news bad for your soul. See you tomorrow. Cheers.